Almost there. <laughs> It's taking a little bit longer today. And we're live. Welcome back to another live session. We're going to talk about the rapid increase in early onset cancers and people in their 30s and 40s. And highlight commonly overlooked clinical signs and symptoms that actually exacerbate or worsen the prevalence and the early diagnosis of cancer. We're going to focus on metabolic health. And unfortunately, that's not being discussed in the lay press coverage of these recently published clinical studies that are finding a surge in cancer in young people between the ages of 30 and 40, known as early early onset cancers. Now, I want to share with you just a few of these different articles. We're going to talk about one from the uh, Journal of the American Medical Association, another from the British Medical Journal, and then talk about the lay press coverage, because I thought it was really interesting. There was an article here uh, in CNN, and the scientists say that, or the, the, sorry, the journalists say that cancer is rising in people under 50, but the cases are a mystery. However, we have ample data to suggest that metabolic health plays a critically important as is, is strongly associated, that is poor metabolic health is strongly associated with the onset of various types of cancer that we are seeing increasing in the population, including but not limited to breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, and brain cancers, which in fact are the very cancers that have been shown to be surging in people that are young, that is under 50, these early onset cancers. So friends, thank you for being here live. Thanks for hitting that like button. We're going to dive into some science today, but if you have any metabolic health or fitness or nutrition related questions, the reason why we do these live sessions is to get to those live questions. So just want to acknowledge those of you all that are here. And as always, if you're enjoying the content, hit that like button, leave me a chat, a uh, comment, and I would love to know where you're from. Where do you, where are you listening in from? This is a little bit earlier than we normally do these. Uh, it's about 3.49 here. Um, so uh, a lot of folks are, uh, what's interesting, uh, some of the comments that I, I, I can acknowledge your comments, but this data was collected prior to the COVID outbreak. So this is unrelated to the thing that people are suggesting in the comments. This is actually purely, in my estimation, a metabolic health phenomenon. And that's why I really want to spend some time on this because many people have changes in glucose and increased hemoglobin A1C and poor metabolic health. In fact, we've shared with you the statistics here. About nine in 10 American adults have some degree of metabolic dysfunction, insulin resistance, uh, poor blood sugar regulation. And so we should not be surprised then that we are seeing multiple reports now from the past decade finding that cancer rates are surging in the young. And so I really want to focus in on what this recent report found and we'll dive into it again. Any live questions, hit that like button if you're enjoying this content. Um, you know, sometimes when studies are hot or something's trending on the media, we do these live sessions and do them quick and impromptu, but let's dive into it. Okay. So there was data collected globally from a report known as the Global Burden of Disease Database, offering a comprehensive overview of cancer statistics globally and a summary of international trends. These results show a striking increase in the global incidence of early onset cancers between the years of 1990 and 2019, with early onset breast cancer having the highest incidence. Really want to focus on this. Breast cancer is very deadly, something that people should be very aware of. And there is a strong link with sarcopenia and loss of muscle and poor metabolic health and breast cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, as well as well as uh, brain cancer. The scientists say that early onset nasopharyngeal and prostate cancers showed the fastest increase in incidence with an estimated annual percentage change of 2.28% which is just really scary. So the four cancer groups with the highest death and disability adjusted life years burden in younger adults in 2019 were breast, tracheal, bronchial lung cancer, colorectal, and stomach cancers. So really important to acknowledge, the colon is highly responsive to a low-carb ketogenic style diet. Colon cancer specifically, we know that these cell types within the, the, the cancerogenic cell types, these neoplastic cells, are characterized by the Warburg effect. This is something we've talked a lot about in various videos. Otto Warburg characterized this phenomenon. He ascribed what happens where cancerous cells, they start to ferment glucose and they behave differently than other cells. And so restricting carbohydrate intake in these different cancer subtypes might be helpful. Now, here's where this article gets quite interesting. Again, we're talking about this British Medical Journal uh, review of the, the actual uh, global uh, 
burden disease to, uh, database. Now, risk factors identified for early onset cancers include dietary factors, alcohol consumption, tobacco use, physical inactivity, and excessive body fatness. I'm not making this up. These are what the scientists actually say, which have all been associated with cancer in older patients as well. Increasingly, a high fasting plasma glucose was identified as a risk factor for early onset cancers. Now let's pause. I get excited about this because I see people wearing their face masks, buying junk food. I see people uh, sitting in their cars on their phones, drinking Starbucks drinks with 70 grams of glucose, serum glucose, and the risk of cancer. This is a meta-analysis involving numerous studies finding that the risk of cancer increases when your fasting glucose is out of line. And so again, the best way to lower your glucose is to restrict the consumption of processed foods, eat more real food, exercise more, walk more, especially after meals, balance and optimize your body's circadian clock system. Try to go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time, get natural sunlight in the morning, get off these devices before, the, before you go to bed. Now, exercise is really important. Just a small plug for the Myoscience Electrolyte Sticks. This is the only creatine-containing electrolyte stick that also features real salt, taurine. You get magnesium, potassium. You can save with the code PODCAST at checkout. This is one of the best caffeine pre- or intra-workout products that's out there. There's close to 700 reviews over at myoscience.com. Save with the code PODCAST at checkout. Numerous reviews from people just like you who are trying to optimize the efficiency and the strength of their workouts, especially if you don't eat enough protein. Creatine uh, can be very helpful. Now, what's interesting about this study is uh, there are other reasons why people develop cancer outside of metabolic derangements. In fact, um, other lifestyle factors contributing to uh, gut microbiome imbalances, such as antibiotic resistance and usage uh, and outdoor air pollution and early life exposures to, sorry, to prenatal uh, and perinatal uh, malnutrition are critical factors. And the scientists say it is critical that we better understand the reasons why there's increases in early onset cancers so that we can better inform prevention strategies. Okay, so again, cancer, we don't wish cancer on anyone. This is a very deadly disease. Uh, the mainstream treatments are ridden with side effects and complications. And so we want to get out in front and prevent this. So what can we do, my friends? Well, it turns out that optimizing metabolic health is a great place to start. Numerous studies now show this, that insulin resistance, prediabetes, obesity, inactivity are, are, are intimately connected with the prevalence of an onset of early onset cancers. This study right here, titled Diabetes uh, Glycated or Glycosylated Hemoglobin and the Risk of Cancer in the U UK Biobank Study. In the conclusions, the scientists say, these results suggest that both diabetes and or elevated hemoglobin A1C are associated with risk of cancer at several anatomical sites. And to be precise, the anatomical sites that they're talking about here are the very cancers that are actually increasing, including the colon, liver, bladder, lung, and also uh, breast, esophagus, pancreas, uh, and prostate, okay? So we, we know this. So why are hospitals offering junk food? You know, why do we see children drinking soda pop? Why is this, the school lunches are abysmal. You know, so we see cancers on the rise. We see, uh, you know, you go to any biotech company and you see their lunch, their cafeteria, it's loaded with junk food. Uh, most corporations, uh, in fact, I just got this uh, uh, screenshot today from a, a major Seattle area hospital that is rec they're recommending this to their diabetic patients. Let me see if I can actually just drop this onto the screen because it's going to blow your mind. Uh, let's do that right now. It's absolutely uh, frightening what is being offered uh, for patients with diabetes in terms of nutrition. Um, the Oh, it's going to be hard for me to actually, well, yeah, it's going to be hard for me to, to get this over for you. It's on my Dropbox. But if you go to my Instagram, I shared a screenshot from a local hospital here in Seattle, Evergreen Hospital. They are instructing diabetic patients to have, to, to choose carbohydrate rich foods, cookies, uh, vanilla wafers, waffles, pancakes, pasta, uh, pizza was on there, French fries. I mean, this is incredulous that these food items are being suggested for people with type 2 diabetes, especially knowing that cancer is on the rise. And there's a much stronger correlation with cancer rates in people who are obese or have type 2 diabetes. And so if these people already have a diagnosis of these conditions, why are we recommending that they eat the foods that cause the disease that they're suffering from in the first place? It's mind boggling to me. Okay. 
Let's get to some of your live questions. Again, friends, I really appreciate you being on. Thanks for that like button. Thanks for leaving a friendly comment. I love to know where y'all are from, where you're tuning in from. Is this a good time? It's a little bit earlier than we normally do. Yes, I see some comments here. The proper human diet, eating real food. Who would have known? In fact, I have a question for y'all. Would you like to see more cooking videos? We do a lot of cooking around here, sprouting, soaking, fermenting, slow cooking, crock pots, and I feel like people need some of that. If you want more cooking videos, hit that like button, just let me know. We will do stuff like that more often. Okay. All right, just eat animal products, fatty meals. Yes, I am with you, seek Jesus. Thank you for that. Okay, Kyle O'Neill has a serious comment. Thank you, Kyle, and thank you for thank you, all of you for leaving uh, comments. Uh, Kyle says, hey, Mike, what do you consider the ideal sodium intake per day for adults? Uh, Element electrolytes suggest four to six grams. You know, it really depends. Uh, Gatorade offers a test. You know, Gatorade, the, the crap that, that people actually give to their kids and so forth, they, they offer a test. There are high sodium excretors and low sodium excretors. I think it's good to just uh, test this out and see. I would tinker with this on exercise days, on sauna days. You know, you can have two to four grams per day. Um, we've interviewed Dr. James DeNicola Antonio three times on this podcast. Uh, just type his name into YouTube. You can check out his book, The Salt Fix. We've dove into sodium uh, and salt extensively. So check that out if you are uh, interested. Uh, Jason says, and, and by the way, Kyle, because you mentioned a company that sells electrolytes, uh, the company that you mentioned is offering um, USP sodium, probably made by an artificial salt brine. What makes the Myoscience Electrolyte 6 different is we use Redmond Real Salt along with creatine and taurine. You're getting so much more mileage compared to that popular brand of electrolytes that you mentioned. So uh, you can save with the code podcast. A lot of great feedback on that. Okay, so getting back to the question here, uh, Jason says, I have gastric intestinal uh, metaplasia. I don't drink, smoke, etc. I have I had H. pylori at one point, but my GCM is benign. Uh, and it all happened after I got the thing. Jason, I'm sorry to hear about this. Uh, really keep us posted uh, on these lives and comments. Uh, we'll be praying. We'll be thinking about you. Um, thank you for your comment and being here. And um Hopefully, you know, continue to make healthy choices and, and uh, um, improve your health. Okay, more food videos. People are saying they want food videos. Cool. All right. Well, we can, we can absolutely do that. Okay. Ban everything uh, says, I'm from Louisiana. Very angry. Please don't ban me. Why would we ban you? <laughs> uh, interesting uh, YouTube uh, name there. Uh, okay. All right, so a, a real question here from Talon52 says, do you think this is nefarious actors in the background regarding this? Even my food pyramid is broke. You know, I think, honestly, it that could be. I think there's so much corporate greed and influence. Uh, I mean, if you look at the American Academy of Dietetics and Nutrition, they invest in Coke and Pepsi and Kellogg's. Uh, many of their board members uh, directly get uh, proceeds and, and income from these major food companies. So I think there's a huge conflict of interest at the policy level at the within all of our institutions. And I think it's just lack of awareness. And I think most people have some sort of food addiction and they don't want to acknowledge that the foods that they're eating are actually shortening their lifespan and their health span. Um, there's a lot of instant gratification, short-term fixes uh, going on in the world. And so I think um, that's what's going on. Uh, but, but who knows? But uh, very interesting. Okay, please recommend a toothpaste with no fluoride. Yeah, uh, Boca. Boca is the toothpaste that I use. Uh, what's unique about that is it has hydroxyapatite that's really good for helping to remineralize your teeth. So again, I don't have any fin financial affiliation with these guys. B-O-K-A, -A, Boca toothpaste, phenomenal toothpaste. Okay. Yeah, you can use uh, baking soda. Um, good question. Okay. More crockpot videos. All right, let's do that. Um, have you ever seen lymph nodes that are filled with tattoo ink? Yeah, this is a good question. Um, there is evidence to suggest that tattoos uh, change in a negative way, lymphatic flow, and, and possibly cause uh, the uh, uptake of different metals and, and uh, the color uh, carbon and so forth uh, can be unhealthy. So I know tattoos can look kind of cool um, if done tactfully, but you know, there could be some health consequences linked with tattoos. Okay. 
All right. Uh, Andrea says, I see children around six years old with pot bellies with their parents having little Caesars and, and so forth. Cancer in the making. Yes, this is really sad. And, you know, uh, Jason, you make a really good point because, again, uh, if patients and uh, parents only knew that the foods that they're feeding their children are setting them up for a potential lifetime of disease and malaise. And we have the evidence now. We have ample studies finding that uh, elevated levels of glucose and hemoglobin A1C are linked with cancer, which is problematic. Okay. Uh, lots of lots of comments here. Thank you all for being here. Um, any other nutrition related questions? Just wanted to hop on real quick and kind of share this with you. Uh, let's talk about alcohol consumption. You know, alcohol is uh, controversial. You know, some people say alcohol is healthy. Some red wine is healthy. I haven't had a drink of alcohol since February 25th of 2023. And um, it's been phenomenal for my sleep. I used to have kind of baggy uh, eyes and be tired in the morning. And, and I think going alcohol free is a phenomenal way to support your health. So I'm all about giving up on alcohol. Now it did take a while getting out of that habit. Sometimes I'll have a kombucha in re to replace my alcohol uh, habit when I would normally crave it, having some of that carbonation. So I think that's something to consider, but yeah. Uh, ditching alcohol. And again, um, this study and this study right here from JAMA, patterns in the incidence and prevalence of cancer uh, in people under the age of 50, uh, both show that alcohol consumption is linked with cancer. So why would you want, you know, a, t uh, you know, a 10 to 120 minute buzz and then have to deal with a lifetime of cancer? Not a good, not a good thing. Um, so friends, that's all I have for you today. Thank you as always for tuning in. Appreciate you sharing this video. Thanks for leaving a comment if you found this helpful. Uh, the two studies that we were talking about today, one was published in JAMA, the other one here in the British Medical Journal, uh, Oncology, BMJ Oncology. Uh, and then we also talked about this one right here, BM, BMJ Cancer Serum Glucose and the Risk of Cancer, as well as this one here. This was a review uh, a paper published in Cancer Epidemiology, Biomarkers and Prevention. And so this was published in a, a another uh, highly high-impact peer-reviewed academic journal. So uh, super grateful that you tuned in live for this short-ish video. If you have any further comments, let me know in the comment section below. We'll catch you on a future one next week. Have an awesome rest of your day, afternoon, or morning, wherever, wherever you are in the world. And um, look forward to more cooking videos in the cross.